Welcome to chapter 32 of the book of Ezekiel. Continues with Pharaoh uh, and Egypt. At this time with Ezekiel, the Pharaoh in Egypt would probably refer to Pharaoh Necho, who had come through Israel to the north, going up to battle Nebuchadnezzar at Karchemish, uh, up by the Turkish-Syrian border today, where he killed, uh, and, and as he went up there, he fought King Josiah in the Valley of Megiddo and killed him, and Josiah's son took reign, and Necho went on up and was defeated by Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, Egypt at various times was an ally, an enemy to uh, Israel and Judah. And so the Pharaoh uh, apparently was the, the, it was the ruler, they call him a king, and had a problem with his uh, relationship to God, the God of Israel, because Egypt was right next to borders Israel on the west. So the lamentation is, uh, means something is going to happen that's going to be bad for whoever you lament against. And Pharaoh and Egypt was the lamentation, so something is going uh, to be uh, happen to them, to that country or that ruler that's not going to be uh, not going to be good. The chapter starts off here. It says, and it took place in the Dodecato year, the twelfth year, in the twelfth month. And we have a timeline here uh, of uh, all the different chapters and uh, being in uh, 32, 1, so the 12th year, the 12th month. And the, yeah, up here it says the year of the captivity of Jehoiakim was the earliest one. So I suppose these other ones, the king of Babylon um, hastened, uh, fastened on to Jerusalem in the ninth year, and then it goes all the way to the 27th year. And then the 25th year of the captivity, or the 14th year after capturing the city. And you can go through all this and figure out this whole timeline. But uh, so this is a, a timeline that uh, was taking place. I got the wrong one here. That's 31, 32. There we are. So the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel saying, O son of man, Anthropu, I take up a lamentation, and I had far, but over is, a P means over, but better, a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now here it calls him, the title is Pharaoh, and he is a king, another title, and Egypt is the name of the country. Uh, take, so it starts off with this uh, mentioning Pharaoh, in the last chapter of this, or the last verse of this chapter, ends up uh, with the multitude, Pharaoh and all his multitude, it says. So it sounds like pretty much this whole chapter has to do with the Pharaoh of that time, although there are things I'll point out that you could think, it well, maybe these are uh, uh, a parentheses where it's a later time uh, with the beast, but uh, we'll get to them. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. The Pharaoh uh, is a is a masculine, and so uh, that's important. Um, Pharaohs, the word Pharaoh is only mentioned in the New Testament five times. Three times by Stephen when he's telling the Jews about the history of uh, the Jews with Egypt, and then mentions once in uh, Romans and once I believe in Hebrews nothing to do with any of this going on here, more of the going back to the time of the plagues and so forth. So uh, there's nothing in Revelation, and you could relate this to at the end time, as far as the word Pharaoh. And you shall say to him, you were likened to, and you being singular, uh, masculine, which would be Pharaoh, you were likened to uh, a lion 
of nations, Leon T, a Leon, Lion, a transliteration, ethnon, ethnic, comes from that word, and as a dracon in the sea. Now, a dragon in the sea, uh, a dragon where it gives sometimes, with Egypt, it's almost like it's talking about crocodiles. Uh, and it was on the Mediterranean, and the crocodiles are probably there. So and he's like a dragon in the sea, a dangerous beast. That, and you gourd in your rivers. Uh, now, exactly what kind of an animal, but he gourd in the rivers. So he was um, a powerful man, powerful r- leader and in that area, and was able to do damage. And disturb the water with your feet and trampled your rivers. So basically was able to do what he wanted to do, how he wanted to do it, no matter who was in his way, and trampled your rivers, controlled uh, Egypt and uh, all the different entities within Egypt that had different gods over various periods of time. Thus says Legi Adonai Kyrios, and I will put my net upon you, that's a fishing net, uh, by an assembly. Uh, well, not always. Sometimes there's other kinds of nets, too. I'm sorry. It could be a net uh, in a house for covering up certain things. But uh, he'll put his net upon, uh, and I will put my net upon you, God says, by an assembly of many peoples, and I will lead you by my hook. So God is in control of the nations control of leaders, and uh, God uh, says he will lead him by his hook. However God works, he can get leaders of countries and peoples of countries. Here an assembly of many peoples. He can use these peoples uh, for his purposes, and God is in control. He allows people to have a certain amount of freedom, but a lot of times the freedom which people think they have, like in a democracy, is actually uh, it works for the benefit of doing God's will, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And I will stretch you upon the earth, uh, like the, basically is sort of a, like the fishing nets where they dried them out on the land, and the plains shall be filled. Now I, this is almost like a somebody that's uh, dying or death the end of them, stretching them out upon the earth. And I shall set upon you all the birds of the heaven. And that is more or less the um, the uh, the birds that eat, that eat carrion, the dead meat uh, that you see with these um, vultures and uh, other birds that eat carrion. Uh, so its figure is of something bad is going to happen to Pharaoh. He will be uh, dead meat were the birds of the heaven, when he says, and will fill up from out of you all the wild beasts of all the earth. So it's a, going to be a worldwide situation where the world at that time was very small compared to what we know it now today. Basically, the eastern Mediterranean is what it was talking about here. Anything west of the Mediterranean was... Um, Pretty much the barbarians, England, Spain, um, the Gauls up in France, even Italy was uh, before the Roman Empire, before the Greek Empire here. And I will put your flesh upon the mountains. And basically went earlier with the Phoenicians who traveled all over the Mediterranean and uh, traded with all these ancient peoples. And I will put your flesh upon the mountains again. And I will fill up ravines from your blood. And so the idea of his death and the army, so forth, uh, filling up ravines, a lot of dead people, soldiers, and so forth. And I will water the earth from your excrement. Well, now, so the excrement from the body uh, comes out in urine and feces. So exactly which one, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but watering the earth would sounds like it would be... Um, the urine, uh, and from your multitude upon the mountains, I will fill up the ravines from you. 
with all this multitude of the soldiers I suppose it's talking about here, then they will be they fill up these ravines with the dead. And I will cover up uh, the heaven in your being extinguished, and I will darken his stars. And the his, I believe, is uh, Pharaoh, because it's in the mask, and the only one that I know of it would be his. Here's the one place you could say, well, this is a future with the beast. Well, uh, it says, and I will cover the sun by a cloud and the moon in no way shall her light appear. Now, we do have uh, three places I'd like to mention. One is Revelation 6.12, where it says, And the sun became black as a sackcloth made of hair. So there is that tie to Revelation. And then uh, Joel, uh, in 2.10, it says, And the sun and the moon shall darken, and the stars shall let down their brightness. And this is a future time. And then in Joel 3.14-15, it says, Sounds resounded in the valley of punishment. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of punishment. The sun and the moon shall darken, and the stars shall let down their brightness. So there is that tie, but I'm not certain if that's you could tie that in here. All the things shining light, phos, phosphorus, comes from that. In the Urano, uh, heaven, Uranus, the planet, Uranus, Urano, comes from that. Uh, the light shall darken over you, and I will appoint darkness over your land, says the Lord, the Lord. Now, this darkness over the land happened earlier when one of the plagues was darkness, when Moses was leading the children from out of uh, Egypt. Now, I don't think he's relating back to Moses, but I just thought I'd bring this darkness out as happened before to uh, Egypt. And says, Kyrios, Kyrios. And so you see here, it's capital L, small O-R-D, and down here it's all capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. This one here, when it's Lord, it's like, um, uh, uh, not, this one would be Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Master, the, uh, uh, not Elohim, I'm trying to think of the other word for uh, God, but it's uh, the, uh, the Almighty, uh, the Lord. And I will provoke to anger the heart of many peoples whenever I lead you as a captivity into the nations, into which, I'm sorry, into a land which you knew not. Well, now I don't know about Egypt being taken captive into all these nations. If that's happened already in the past, maybe it did with Nebuchadnezzar when he came there. And many nations shall be gloomy over you and their kings shall be amazed by a ecstasy. We have an ecstasy, a change of state. They relied upon Egypt. And when they see it being destroyed, then they're going to be amazed. Now, the allies to Egypt could have been uh, Ethiopia and uh, Libya, other countries close by against Babylon. But they will... Uh, they will be amazed at a change of state in the flying of my broadsword unto their faces. Now, the flying of the broadsword is an interesting uh, thing. The broadsword is in the book of Revelation, and the flying, I'm not, uh, uh, it could be a tie again to the future. Uh, waiting for their downfall, these peoples, from the day of your downfall. For thus says, Curios, curios. The broadsword of the king of Babylon shall come upon you. So now here we see Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar, and that broadsword is going to hit uh, Necho when he's up there at the Battle of Karcha mission. He was defeated. With swords of gigantone, of giants. Um, the giants, it says, uh, and we first see a this word gigantone in Genesis 6, 4, and it says, the giant, and the giants were upon the earth in those days. And after that, the sons of God continually entered to the daughters of men and procreated for themselves. The, those were the giants from the eon, the renowned men. So now, uh, 
the daughters of man and procreated for themselves, uh, anthropos, which is man, uh, and uh, the sons of God, which uh, we're not exactly sure what these sons of God were, but they uh, had uh, intercourse apparently, and then the giants of the eon came from them, the renowned men. Uh, uh, Goliath was one of them. And we're told about others that had six fingers and six toes. So these giants were around, but they finally uh, dwindled down to not be around anymore. And it says, with swords of giants, even I shall throw down your strength. Pestilent ones from all nations. So all the nations with uh, Egypt are going to be destroyed, thrown down. And they shall destroy the insolence of Egypt. Uh, the giants, uh, the swords of giants, uh, the pestilent ones from the nations, maybe it's talking about that they will destroy the in- So maybe it's talking about other nations. It's hard to say here because of the they. Who is the they? Uh, uh, the, the they in, uh, earlier in chapter, uh, I'm sorry, in, in, in 12, the they, I, I, okay, as I'm, I'm getting a little bit confused here with later chapter 20 in the usage of the they. And they shall destroy the insolence of Egypt, whoever they were, and all her strength shall be broken. And I and her would be Egypt, uh, because Egypt is in the feminine. Uh, if you look up at Greek dictionaries, you'd see it would tell, tell you that this name is in the feminine. Uh, all her strength, that her is right here in the feminine, shall be broken. And I will destroy all her cattle, Egypt, from uh, much water. Um, so the cattle, now, they're not going to, apparently the water is going to cease as much as they had, I suppose. And in no way shall a foot of man disturb it anymore. And the track of cattle in no way shall trample it. And I'm Suppose it's talking about uh, Egypt, and if this happened uh, to a certain extent, uh, I don't know, or if it's in the future. Then shall their waters be still, and the rivers uh, shall go forth as oil, says Adonai the Lord. Now, as oil, does it mean slow? I'm guessing that's probably what it means here, a lack of water. Whenever I shall give Egypt unto destruction, and the land shall be made desolate with the fullness of her. Whenever I shall scatter all the ones dwelling in her, in Egypt, even they shall know that I am the Lord. So uh, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Now, has that happened or is it going to happen? Uh, I don't know. could be either one, I suppose. I don't know if the people at that time when they were defeated considered Yahweh as being the one that they knew who did it. And th- there is a lamentation, and they shall lament him. And the him, I believe, here is probably um, Pharaoh because he is the masculine. And um, it says back up here, uh, well, when, someplace, when this happens. So that could have been a future There is a lamentation, and they shall lament him. And the daughters of the nations shall lament him over Egypt, over what happens to the country, and the uh, physical and uh, political. And over all her strength they shall lament her, says Kyrios, Kyrios, again, the Lord Yahweh. And now it changes a little, and it happened in the twelfth year, the same year, in the fifteenth of the month, uh, the word of the, doesn't say uh, which month, though, does it? Uh, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O son of man, lament over the multitude of Egypt. Plethos, plethora comes from that word. Lament over the multitude of Egypt. So now we don't have Pharaoh yet, or exactly it's the multitude of Egypt, the people there, when, doesn't say. For The daughters, uh, three, shall bring her down, her 
being Egypt, even the nations dead into the depths, uh, even the nations will bring her down, dead into the depths of the earth, to the ones going down into the pit. Now we have the lake of fire in the New Testament, uh, but this word here, 998.1, only appears in the Old Testament because it's got a decimal there. So that means anytime there's a decimal, the word only appears in the Old Testament. Here's another one that's good looking, only appears in the Old Testament. Most of these other can, now the other ones can be in the New and the Old. Of course, they're in the Old because we're here in the Old, so we know they're in the Old and the New. But if you're in the New Testament, you wouldn't know if 2479 appeared in the Old or not. You, all you'd know was did appear in the New, unless you looked it up, of course, in the Lexical Concordance. But anyway, the pit. From out of good-looking waters, descend and sleep with uncircumcised. So from the earth, uh, sleep is death. Uh, death of the individuals and death of um, nations and peoples and so forth. Among the midst of one slain by sword, they shall fall with him. That is, the one slain shall fall with uh, I believe him as being Pharaoh. Here, I mean, it doesn't uh, mention him, a Pharaoh, uh, over the multitude of Egypt is plural. So there's nowhere here it says him. So I'm guessing it goes back to Pharaoh because it ends up with Pharaoh. So, and all of his strength shall sleep. So again, against Pharaoh, and uh, the giants shall say to you in the depth of the pit, so now all these giants that were in the pit, apparently where the evil people go that uh, have caused havoc on the earth using uh, warfare. And the, these giants down in the pit said, uh, you are not best. Go down and sleep with the ones uncircumcised in the midst of the ones slain by sword. There, it, located there in the pit, is Assur, Assyria, and all his synagogue, a synagogue, a gathering around the bow, Kiklo, circle, um, his grave, Assyria and his gathering around about uh, his grave. Now is his, um, is that Egypt or is it, uh, is it talking about, um, I believe probably Assyria because Assyria, I think is, I'm not sure if Assyria is masculine or not. Forgot to look that up. That would tell you if, if it was. It's not, fe it's not feminine, so it wouldn't be Pharaoh. Pharaoh is feminine. Okay, so Assyria. And all slain having fallen by sword. So all these people in the pit uh, having saw fallen by the sword. The ones given uh, his graves in the sides of the pit. And his gathering existed surrounding his tomb. Uh, the, the tomb of Pharaoh. And the the ones in the pit, whoever they were. All the slain having fallen by the sword, the ones giving them fear upon the land of life. So all the people that were they're doing bad things, uh, causing havoc, like I said, uh, causing a fear upon the land of the living. And then he lists some of them. There is Elam, and Elam is Iran today. And all his force surrounding his tomb so ties in Iran with uh, the destruction of Egypt, could be a future. All the slain having fallen by the sword, and the ones going down uncircumcised into the depth of the earth, putting fear, ones putting the fear of them upon the land of life, and they took their torment with the ones going down into the pit. So the end of all these people that are doing all these horrible, evil things, It'll, they will come, they will be sent to the pit. And uh, exactly, it's, it's more of a condition for a groupings of people rather than individuals here. It's interesting how it brings that down into this pit. Uh, in the midst of the slain, we can add that word to the English derivatives book. If we have the word, it's a travmation. And we have travma, a trauma. In the midst of the Travmation, there they put Mosok Ke Thovel. Now, Meshech and Tubal 
we'll see later in chapter 39 when these nations come against Israel. And most people believe that these are places that are in Turkey, um, the country from the far north. I don't see it being in Russia, but some people would think that's where they were too. But uh, anyway, we'll go into 39, chapter 39. We'll go into these places here. But uh, these places, uh, see, Turkey and our, all these countries today are all uh, Islamic countries. And 39 will show they all come against Israel and are defeated. And all his strength surrounding his tomb. Now, I had a hard time with that one because of his strength and all his strength surrounding his tomb. Now, uh, who is uh, the his there in, in verse 26? Um, because it, it has Mosek and Thubal, you would think there it would be plural. Uh, all his slain ones all the uncircumcised ones. I guess it goes back to Pharaoh. Slain ones by the sword, the ones putting their fear upon the land of life, as Pharaoh did. And they sleep with the giants, the ones are having fallen from the eon, which I mentioned in uh, Genesis, from, from the eon, <clears throat> who went down into Hades. So now we know the pit is Hades, and Hades is mentioned quite a bit in the New Testament, more so in the New than the Old. <clears throat> And they're with weapons of warfare. So it all has to do with these powerful entities in history at that time and maybe the future. And they put their swords under their heads, like for pillows, and their lawless deeds came upon their bones. <clears throat> I don't know if he means cutting their heads off here, put their swords under their heads. So. Uh, and their lawless deeds came upon their bones. For they were frightening giants in their life, <clears throat> all these entities. And you shall be, and you probably would be Pharaoh, Egypt, and you shall be destroyed in the midst of the uncircumcised. All these are uncircumcised as far as uncircumcised in heart. Now, a lot of, I think, Muslims are circumcised. So um, if it was just the uncircumcised, I, I think using this as like a, what, they, what would this be an example of some sort of a figure of speech? And they shall sleep with the ones being slain by sword. There is Edom, and Edom is a country that is to the east of the Dead Sea and south, um, east of um, Israel. And her kings, Vasalis, Basil, comes from that, and all of the rulers. Assyria, which is up north, uh, up north and over towards Mesopotamia, where Nineveh was, capital of Assyria, and went into Asia Minor, Turkey. The ones giving their strength to the wound of the sword, travma. Now we have the word uh, travma here. It's not the verb, but it's a uh, the the wound. These sleep with the slain, with the ones going down into the pit, Hades. There, the rulers of the north. Now, the rulers of the north, if it's in past time here, it would have been probably Babylon coming across the north, defeating Assyria, or uh, Assyria itself, uh, other, and other peoples. The Medes came from the north also into Iran. All these, all the commandments of Assyria going down with the slain, with the fear of them, and in their strength being ashamed. Now, Assyria joined with Egypt against Babylon. And Assyria and Egypt were defeated, and we never hear of Assyria again. Basically, Assyria ceased to exist because Babylon took over that whole area. Then came the Medes, uh, Persians, and that empire, and then Alexander the Great, and then Rome. So uh, they all, with the fear of, and then in their strength, being ashamed, they sleep uncircumcised with one slain of the sword. So now at that time, they may have been uncircumcised, and so it could very well be referring to ones at that time. And they carry away their torment with the ones going down into the pit. Those, uh, those, those peoples, King Pharaoh shall see, and he shall come, uh, be comforted over all their strength, 
well, he's going to be comforted for a while, but slain by the sword, Pharaoh in all his force, says the Lord, the Lord, Kyrios uh, Yahweh. For I have put the phobone, we have a fear, a phobia, phobone of him upon the land of life. So many people and probably a lot of the Israel feared Pharaoh. Yet he shall sleep in the midst of, of the uncircumcised, with one slain by the sword, even Pharaoh in all his multitude, says the Lord, the Lord. So the ones that come against God come to an end. Uh, all sorts of nations that have come against God in various forms. In the Old Testament, uh, the Romans uh, came against Israel and took them uh, captive, and then Rome fell. And then uh, after that, um, many Jews were persecuted by Spain, and Spain lost power to England. And now England uh, ruled for hundreds of years, and now uh, England has walked away from God pretty much. Basically, uh, London is now a, they call it Londis, Lond Londinistan because of all the Muslims there, and now England is losing its power, and then the enemies of Israel uh, are still the ones that we'll get to in chapter 39, the Muslim countries, and they will eventually uh, be destroyed and all go down into the pit. Individuals uh, will go also follow the beast into the lake of fire. It mentions that in the book of Revelation. Chapter 33 Jeremiah is called a watchman. Very interesting chapter. Let's find out what the watchman of Israel, house of Israel, and how uh, it relates to us. Are we watchmen? We'll find out uh, if you join in chapter 33, the next video seminar. I hope to see you then, and God bless.